So, welcome to FCRB TV, and uh, as I as I as promised, uh, we're going to talk about the uh, massive match tomorrow at Wembley between Tottenham Hotspur and my Arsenal football club, the famous Arsenal. Um, it's been a uh, it's been a crazy first half of the season. We've started the second half, and it's still been crazy up and down. One one day we play. Swansea and we look terrible. We look like we don't need to be in the Premier League. We look just disoriented, horrible, don't have a clue what we're doing and we, we get batted. But then all of a sudden, you know, we get our two new signings in. Mikatarian from United comes in and gets his first start. And then Pierre Emerick Aubameyang from Borussia Dortmund, you know, gets his debut in the Premier League and we look like world beaters. We look phenomenal. And uh, I am very optimistic about the game tomorrow at the, at, I was going to say the lane, you know, at their, uh, their rented home there, Wembley, because um, I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, you have to have balance in your team and you have to have an attack that's threatening. When you have an attack that's threatening and you put your opposition on their heels, it will allow you to not have to worry about defending so much because you have the ball and they can't always concentrate on attacking you because they have to worry about your defense and to be honest even though we signed Alexander Lacazette he hasn't been dangerous enough and we've been struggling in the in the final third when we were at Swansea we didn't want any of it because it was a very physical contest Swansea were playing for survival and we just had no cutting edge up front all of a sudden with Mkhitaryan and Aubameyang, the two Dortmund brothers who have come in to help us out now, you know, as they've come out to help us out, um, we're, we look like a totally different team, a completely different team. And I think that, you know, what Spurs do really well that people don't talk about, well, they do kind of talk about it, but they kind of hype up other things that Spurs, they think Spurs do, is that they defend very well, and in defending, they can counter you. And they basically ask you to come on to them, and they go on the break. But I think that with what we have up front now, with the new Perez and the new Thierry Henry and the squad, we're going to put them under so much pressure that we're going to have the breakthrough first, and we're going to put them to the sword. I really don't think Tottenham has anything for us tomorrow. I really don't. I think that they were very fortunate to get a draw at Anfield. Those were two clear dives. Three, if you count... Uh, Deli Alley's that that was not given, and I don't think it was booked, but he 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 definitely got a look from the referee, and Lovren gave him a word, you know. Uh, but uh, I don't think Tottenham has anything for us more. Harry Kane is 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 phenomenal. Yes, he's a very good striker, but um, I'm not too worried about. It. I think that he's not going to get enough of the ball because we're going to have it, and when we have it, we're going to make it count this time. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go with, uh, you know, they've, they've talked about uh, Czech may not be available uh, through injury, which is not a problem. I think that Ospina can do the job. Um, and then in the back, we're going to go with uh, with uh, the four in the back of, of Nacho Monreal, the most consistent uh, uh, defender we have at the moment, with uh, Captain Koscielny and Mustafi at the center of the, in the heart of defense, and then Bellerin at the right back. And then in midfield, I would go with um, Granit Xhaka and Aaron Ramsey to start. Um, I know a lot of people want Jack in there because, you know, he's born and bred Arsenal and all that. But Ramsey's coming off a hat trick, and he's our Steven Gerrard. He gets in the box. He's a box-to-box -box player. He gets in the box, and he'll finish his chances. And with Mkhitaryan going to be on the right-hand side, dude, you know, you got to have that guy coming through. He's more of a goal threat than, than Jack Wilshere is. So Jack's going to have to have a seat on the bench to start it. And then to finish out the midfield, we're going to go with um, uh, Ozil up the middle with Mkhitaryan on the right. And yes, my countryman, uh, Alex Iwobi from Nigeria, will start on the left-hand side. And some people are going to be like, oh, why are you starting him there? He doesn't need to be there. You're talking bollocks, all that. It's like, listen... Iwobi will follow instructions. Iwobi will track back. So on the counters, he's going to run. You can't go and put Lacazette over there. You can't do that. And then you can't like you can't 
force Ozil wide left or Mkhitaryan wide left and put Ozil on the right and then play Jack up the middle with with Ramsey and, and, and Shaka holding. You can't do that. That There's no balance there, bro, because Ozil's not tracking over there. Ozil needs to come through the middle, all right? So how about we leave Ozil where he needs to be, up the middle, underneath Aubameyang, who's going to start. So Lacazette can't get, on, get in the first team either. He can't get in the first 11. And then we go with that. Owobi on the left, Mkhitaryan on the right. Balance where we can get forward with those lads. And they will track back and defend. Ozil up the middle. And then Aubameyang up front. Um, it doesn't really matter what uh, Tottenham really start with. You know, they'll probably start with Musa Dembele in the middle. Maybe one Yama as well. Because they really want to clog it up, beat us up. Be, be, be uh, you know, strong through the spine of their team. And try to hit us on the break. But I'm telling you, I don't think they're going to really get that chance. I don't really think so. They, they they weren't at the races when they came to the Emirates. We beat them 2-0. And I do not believe that they're going to really be at it again tomorrow. I don't think so because we're going to have the ball. And now with Aubameyang and Mkhitaryan in our attack with Ozil also running loose, we're going to put them to the sword tomorrow, people. Arsenal's going to belt Tottenham tomorrow. We're going to make a statement, and we're going to make a run at this top four, uh, top four finish. Chelsea's in, Chelsea's reeling. They are, uh, they don't even want to play anymore. They they look they look uh, uh, bereft of ideas. They look they look lost. They they look like they're, they're tired. They want to start all over. They want a new manager. So they're gonna fall out of the top four. Liverpool will be there to, for for the taking as well, um, with their goalkeeping um, issues. But I tell you what, tomorrow's a massive game, and I am so, so jacked up for it, you know. And it's a perfect day for me because we wake up early, you watch the North London Derby, first one at, at Wembley. This is the first London, London Derby uh, in the league that will be at Wembley, of course, because usually both sides have their own stadiums to play in. Um, so it's going to be an electric atmosphere. And um, right after that, my club... You know, our, our, our three active teams will be playing in their games as well, 11, 11 20, 8 p.m., and, and then 8, 8.45 after that. So it's going to be um, um, an exciting day for me, and I believe all of our teams are going to win. Arsenal and FC Red and Blacks will win all their games. Um, again, I think that uh, we'll be starting on the left. He will give us balance. He will follow instructions. That's very important. And then look, with the with with the the starting eleven that I've given, we're going to have options off the bench that can change the game. You have someone like Alexander Lacazette who can come on. Now imagine this: if the game is one-one or it's zero-zero, and we want to open it up more, we take off Iwobi, we bring on. Lacazette, and we put him on the left, yeah? But he's going to drift into the middle, and we say, you know what? You're not defending. Don't worry. Don't come back to defend. Now we'll just attack with four. Ramsey will, will, take, a, will, will take a step back and uh, have to cover that left-hand side a little bit, and then we'll just go go at him that way. You know what I mean? We could do something like that. Also, or you can leave a will be on, you, or, or you could take a will be off, and then you slide, you, you, you do what you want to do where you slide... Um, Ozil off to the right, make a turn to the left, you bring on Jack Wilshire, and then you go from there. Now he gets to add passing and creativity to the attack, but we've got to get um, uh, Lacazette on as well if we need to. But again, look at the options that we have. I think that what has happened in this transfer window is is pretty phenomenal because also, I mean, we haven't spent money like this or really made moves like this in a long time. I really believe that with the addition of Aubameyang, that's the Thierry Henry that we've been waiting for. And then we also get Mkhitaryan, and that's the, the Bobby Perez that we've been waiting for. And we've already had the, the Dennis Burkamp replacement in Mesut Ozil, and he just resigned. So that is huge for the club. And I think that it's, 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 it's a new beginning for Arsenal people. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning for our beloved Arsenal. And um, we have reason to to believe again that we can make a run and we're on the up. I, I do um, err on the side of caution with the rest of the Arsenal fans that, you know, we want to spend money and get defenders and things like that. We, we, we shouldn't hold our breath because we know our owner is still who he is. And um, again, it's not uh, Wenger's doing. It's it's Kroenke. 
You know what I mean? We were able to get these players for virtually nothing. To get Aubameyang for sixty million or something like that, and and then Mkhitaryan came in a tra- in a swap deal with Alexis. Uh, it's 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 not it's not a lot of money. It does it's, it's not a lot that we've you know used to get them in, in, in terms of what you know what City's doing over there building a. Uh, ultimate team just spending money buying defenders for 60 million and just and they were ready to get Mares for the same amount almost you know until less to pull the plug on that but you know so it, it, we're, we're making our way back and I and I really do think that our defense will look better now because they won't have to defend so much when a team is in a game and they feel like you know what they, they're not going to score against us so we can have them you know that's what's been happening but now with the new additions, they can be like, wait a minute, they, they could score. So now they've got the drop off, and when they have to worry about us attacking, they are not going to have the focus and the time to get after our back line either. So I think that is uh, very, very important to, uh, to understand and, uh, to, and give us belief for tomorrow. Um, so... Uh, I just cannot wait. I really can't wait to, to see this game unfold tomorrow morning. Um, I think that uh, I think that uh, we're really gonna give it to them. I'm, I'm, I I really don't rate Tottenham. You know, people say they they did they're great going forward. Eriksen and Deli Ali and Kane. Listen, Eriksen is very good. Uh, Harry Kane is 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 sublime. The guy is is arguably the best strike in the world right now. Um, um, but Deli Ali, I think, is is, is fraudulent. Uh, he's just another player. But um, again, it's all on the counter. They they will not get possession and put us under the cosh. They won't keep it and probe us. They won't boss us around. They don't do that. All they do is hit us on the break. That's all they ever want to do. Did you see them at Anfield? They never really had it. Even when they played United and they beat them two nothing. You know, even when they beat United, right? If they didn't score after 11 seconds, it would have been a real tough situation for them. But they got that cushion. United had to chase the game. And then it fell right into the hands of Tottenham. I really don't think that they're that side. that They're not, they're not, they're not City where they get it, they keep it, and they make you run and chase. And then you have, you're, you're chasing shadows trying to keep them out of your box. That's not them. All they are, all they are is a team that counters. That's all that they are. A team that counters. And if you're not getting opportunities to counter because you have to defend all day long, then you're not going to get your chances. You're going to have to take the ball off us, and I don't think they're going to be able to do that. We're going to come right in. And let's not forget, Wembley's our second home. We go there and we win trophies. We win tons of trophies in there. We just stay winning at Wembley. So, And we have two games at Wembley this month. And you know what? Tomorrow is, 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 is it's like a title we're playing for. The bragging rights of, of, of North London to, to climb up the table. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I am really looking forward to it. I think that uh, um, the, the, uh, the, the, sign, the two new signings are, uh, you know, they've, uh, they've lifted the squad. They've lifted the squad. They've uh, given, given even the players new hope and belief. And believe it or not, Alexis Sanchez's departure was a gift. It was a blessing for the club. Because even when he came in, he doesn't really play Wenger ball. He plays his own game. He plays to get on the ball, beat a man, create, all that stuff. And that's not really Wenger ball. Wenger ball is passing and moving, connecting the dots, getting in the box, slotting the ball home. We have looked since his departure. When we played Crystal Palace, we looked phenomenal. In the early part against Swansea, we were all right. Then we just fell apart. And then you see us with with uh, Aubameyang up front, and we looked menacing. We took apart a new, uh, a, uh, an Everton side that has internationals in it, and uh, and a manager who I think is is a guy who's had our number in the past with Bolton, and and he's even he had a, had a time with West Ham where they gave us fits, and he knows how to clog up space, Sam Allardyce, you know. So we made them look poor, man. You know, and I don't think we got enough credit, Arsenal, for that performance. You know, they would say, oh, Everton were real poor, blah, 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 blah. Everton were getting results, 
you know, two, three weeks on the trot, they were getting results, and everybody said, that, oh, look at the old guy scoring goals. He's at a place where they can get the best out of him. You know, Sam Allardyce is doing this and that. And then they came to the Emirates, and they got thumped. After, what, 20 minutes, it was 3-0, 4-0. It was a wrap, dude. It was 3-0, I think. It was a wrap. So I tell you what. I tell you what, man. Tomorrow morning is going to be electric. I, I pick Pierre Emerick Aubameyang to open the scoring, and we are going to give them 2 3 0 tomorrow. We're going to give it to Tottenham. Give it to them. I cannot wait. And then right after that, I go off to FC Red and Black Games and watch these future stars do their thing as well. So um, that is uh, how I feel about uh, tomorrow. I cannot wait. Um, I think that uh, um, Mkhitaryan is going to have a have a have a you know have a run of the park. So will Ozil, um, Koscielny, and Mustafa will be up for it as well. We don't have to worry about Nacho Monreal because the guy is on fire, and Bellerin will 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 feel the confidence. He looks more confident. He he looks and and the team just looks freer without Alexis, always yelling at people. You know what I mean? Nobody liked that. Nobody enjoyed it. Now the guys look like they're enjoying their football again. So, I cannot wait for tomorrow. Um, I will give a post-match, um, a post-match uh, video uh, of of the North London Derby. Um, it'll probably be after um, our 2006 boys match at 11:20, or it might be before, depending if I have the time, and uh, and we'll go from there. But also, there'll be a video coming. Um, on um, about Jeff Cameron and his interview, his uh, article that in the, in the sport in the, in the athletes review or something like that, Tribune, um, and he talked about the state of uh, U.S. soccer and uh, the debacle of the national team not qualifying for the World Cup. Um, he's a U University of Rhode Island graduate, as am I. Um, we have a lot of the same friends, um, and uh, he said some really phenomenal things that uh, I think a lot of U.S. soccer fans need to read and let it sink in because he he really spoke the truth. But we'll, that, that video will be coming as well. So, um, um, yeah, just uh, subscribe. You know, well, you know how they do the YouTube thing. Click the subscribe button at the, uh, subscribe button at the bottom and uh, follow uh, FCRB TV because it's the new beginning. You're going to get some good information here, all right? And uh, there's two teams that we love here, FC Red and Blacks and Arsenal Football Club. Come on, you Gunners. Let's smash those Spurs.